Bree Harris. Hello. <laughs> it's good to have you for the gospel. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, grateful for you, grateful for your ministry, and you are the Dean of Women Correct. at the Masters University. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit about what that means Yeah. and what the Lord has you do in there? Yeah, it's a tough job to explain a little bit, but I am over all the women on campus. Um, I oversee just the events we do. I am a part of the discipleship of the resident directors and the resident assistants. Um, I deal with discipline, and so basically if it has students, I'm a part of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like a, a subtitle for you then would be like Dean of Drama. That could be. That could be. college, <laughs> RAs, I, as a pastor, I have, we're near uh, GCU in Arizona yeah. and ASU, and I've got like RAs and all these different people yeah. that are in our church. Yeah. And there's always these high point moments, and then there are these eras of drama. Yes. And it's always erupting. Yeah. So you are actively ministering, I'm sure, daily. Yes, and I'm a resident director, so I live in a dorm with 84 girls. And so <laughs> I get the knocks, the phone calls, the late night texts. You are stacking treasure in heaven, <laughs> literally stacking it. Yes, it keeps me on my toes, so it's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, I've been a resident director for going into my fifth year and okay. then going to my fourth year as a dean. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't have kids in college yet, but mm -hmm. on behalf of so many parents like me, that one day we'll send our children to college and on behalf of many of the parents whose kids, grown kids are there, thank you for yeah. your faithfulness. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to have you on because you have done a tremendous job over the years teaching, ministering, equipping, discipling mm -hmm. uh, on a number of issues, specifically to women. I, I wanna really speak to some issues with you yeah. about things that the next generation of women are facing and current women yeah. of all ages. And so we'll cover gossip, let's cover uh, the very famous topic of modesty. Everyone oh, loves talking yeah. about Love that. that. <laughs> we'll talk about comparison. And then let's talk about women in ministry. Mm -hmm. It'd be so fun to do a video on why you're not a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> but you do significant ministry. God is using you. Yeah. So clearly you're not suppressed, oppressed, and correct <laughs> and sent away yeah, with a head covering and to be never to be heard from. Right. You're doing some pretty significant work over there. Yeah. We're grateful, but I'm excited to sit down with you. I think these will be really helpful for people. Let's start in this particular video talking about gossip. Yes. And you no doubt deal with this often and people will call it venting. Uh, there are different forms of gossip yes. and different approaches, but when you look at the New Testament and some of the directives given to women, mm -hmm. there's, not, there's not a ton of them. I mean, all of the commands of God are for his daughters, right. but specific, gender-specific ones. You'll see that women are not to be, and you see this with deacons' wives and other aspects in the New Testament, Paul says not to be malicious gossips, mm -hmm. specifically. And he does speak to modesty as well and not to be addicted to much wine. Let's zero in though on gossip. Yeah. Is that a prevalent issue? Is that just Christian cliche? What do you see from your seat? Yeah, from my perspective, it's a big issue. It's unfortunate that it's such an issue, but I think that when we ask students, our girls on campus, like what's one of the top three issues, gossip is always one of them. Um, and I think that in the culture that we live in today with social media and just like sharing your opinions and like all of that, there's no, no one's holding anything back yeah. and I so I'm always just like you can tell these students have never been told like you don't need to say something about everything <laughs> or like come to conclusions when you don't have all the information uh, and so I feel like it's become a huge a huge issue yeah do you how do you deal with that do you tell them like to just stop yeah figure it out do you, how do yeah. you walk them through that I mean I think it's something we're really trying to attack especially this school year um and I think a part of what we want to do is just show them how the bible talks about it mm -hmm. I mean it's their very aggressive language about gossips and how ugly it is and I think even just thinking about like how to love people well um and to to be good friends or to be thoughtful and honor the lord and how we speak about each other and yeah. I think it comes in so many different forms where you're given a prayer request and you're just like sharing too much information in the form of like pray for her uh and so just hoping kind of call that out i think a lot of girls do ask like how do i know when it's gossip mm -hmm. or like those types of questions and so i think giving them helpful things to think about like would you say it if that person was there is like a really easy thing to think through and is it like uplifting or edifying is it beneficial mm -hmm. there are like a lot of biblical principles we can draw from to yeah help us think about how we talk about uh, other people. And so 
I think that's a big part of how we're trying to attack it. And, and then also call in our girls who, when you're in that scenario, tell your friend not to talk about it. Like, hey, that's too much information. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, accountability. Because everybody's just like, oh, give me the tea. Like, tell me more about that <laughs> thing. Uh, and so I was like, we also need to help each other by not yeah. being like that. And so, so you would say be that direct. Like, someone starts bringing stuff up. We're like, hey, Bree, I need, you know, did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah. Or you would go that direct and say... Oh, yeah, no, I didn't hear that. But have you talked to her about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is a good way to approach it. Or even in my friendships, I see us being like, I'll have friends who will hesitate before they say something. Mm. And I feel like I used to be like, no, tell me it's okay. And now I'm like, you know what? If you're thinking, like, maybe you shouldn't say it. Like, if you hesitated, don't, just don't even tell me. That's and then really they're good. like, okay, yeah. So I feel like we've helped each other out you like that. You can encourage more than with an edge. Yes. Like, oh, I, mean, I assume you told her then already. Very... They're right. Almost passive aggressive. Yes. And you're just like, oh, tell me more. Yeah. But then I think cutting it off. But then I think in a situation where maybe someone's like, oh, I need to tell you something. Um, even if girls are asking for advice, I think I would sometimes I'll have them say, like, don't tell me who it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe give me a scenario if you're looking for wisdom on how to help. Yeah. Um, and even starting there can be helpful if because you can really seek you. Sometimes you need to seek wisdom mm -hmm. um, and advice on how to deal with something. Um, but just doing, thinking about how can I protect my friend? Yeah. How can I love them even in light of maybe this difficult thing? That's so good. So, can you name, want to just do this for fun, it's a fun exercise. Okay. Let's try to name the different forms of gossip. Okay. So you said one already, prayer, prayer gossip. Prayer gossip. And I think we laugh because it's true, but it's yeah. also uncomfortable, it's, like it's also funny. comical. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're sitting there and people will be like, you know, what, any prayer requests? And yes. I would imagine for you, so adults do it, but a, a little bit less in church where I pastor, you you will have people pray for others, but they don't do it as obvious. I, yeah. I believe on in like college environments. It's a little more obvious. You may have, yeah, we really need to pray for Brie. Um, <laughs> she has just been stumbling in her sin, and yeah. she has been very, very outside the bounds um, of what the handbook calls for. I mean, you, oh, I'm no, sure. And so we need, to, <laughs> we, need to, we need to pray for her. Yeah. And I told her last night, but I, I really just, I think we need to pray for her right now and intercede for her. And yeah. Like, wow, so spiritual. Yes. And so and like just put all her information out spiritual. there. Yeah. <laughs> so prayer gossip. What are some other ones? Um, venting, I think you brought up. Yeah, venting would be, uh, I'm just expressing myself. What are some other excuses yes. with it? I think even with venting, like, you can, I'm a verbal processor. Yes. Like, that's a big part of that, which I understand. I feel like I verbally process yeah. too, but it's a like you don't have to do. verbally process about yep. someone else in a way that is hurtful. That's really helpful. Yeah. So, uh, uh, venting, prayer gossip. Um, I mean, there's just malicious gossip. There is malicious. So, that's just the nasty stuff. Yes. Where you're like, it's intentional. Oh, I need to tell yeah. You. you, so you brought up advice gossip. Yes. Okay, that one. That's a tough one. I think of that one pastorally. Because there are there are times where you need advice, and you go to an older pastor, or another pastor, and go, "Hey, so I need some advice, safe space, you know, yeah. all that." But that's actually a really good one. I'm I'm thinking of ways that even as pastors we can be more careful yeah. to give a scenario, not the individual. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's actually advice. Yeah. Any other ones? Um, I'm trying to think. Malicious, Is that four? Prayer, <laughs> advice, venting. Those, those about do it. it. covers it. What yeah. are your thoughts on uh, general detached? So we're talking about a lot of people we know and yeah. people in our circles. What are your thoughts on how to, dealing with these young women who they're coming in and they're just talking about random people yeah. and celebrity gossip or juicy stuff or yeah. drama? Yeah. Is that, how do you guide that as a Christian leader? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting space because it's like you don't know these people. But I think so much of that is just being, being able to understand that like we don't need to practice coming to conclusions without having information. Mm. I think that hurts us a lot. And we, we learn to assume more like it's a practice. And so I think that bleeds into other things. And so I think it's important to sometimes I will be like, you know, we don't know all the information. So mm. I can't really come to... A conclusion or that or like I don't always have to have some something to say about something that's happening yeah. with a celebrity that we don't even personally know and so Super I think wise. just kind of calling some of that out so that it doesn't become a practice in other areas of life yeah, you know super wise do you think in today's social media culture that we even in your role as a leader are expected to have answers for everything and if not an answer an opinion 
Yeah. And when you say you don't know, are you, do you ever feel insecure about being a lesser authority now in their mind? And they're like, well, I can't go to Brie. Like, you'll, you'll get a boxed answer. No, she won't engage on that because... <laughs> yeah. Or is that actually one of the ways to train this generation? I feel like it's one of the ways to train them. I think it's helpful to have someone be like, you know what? I don't have a conclusion. I can't come to a conclusion mm. on that. Because then when it's a situation where maybe you do know the person and you don't have, you're not privy to all the information, yep. you can trust authority or just be like, you know what? I don't know how all the details. And so I'm not going to assume X, Y, and Z. And so I think there's like crossover with those things. Yeah. And so I think it's helpful to try to put a stop to that because it bleeds into how you deal with other things. Yeah, you're modeling this humility yeah. to say, I don't know. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a it's a humility thing. It's yeah. okay to, you're not, like we don't know everything and so mm. it's I think it's helpful to be able to land there and be okay with it. That's really good. Okay, yeah. another question. What's going on inside of our hearts when we gossip? What is that? Yeah, I mean, there can be a lot of things. I think even for girls sometimes it's about I mean, we'll talk about this, but like people pleasing. Mm. Like I think sometimes it'll make us feel like, oh, we're cool or we're relevant or like, you know, we're with, if I want to be with this crowd and I talk about this thing, they'll like accept me or like me. Mm -hmm. I think that can be a part of it. I think a lot of it is about us. And that's why we don't think about the people who could potentially be hurt or whatever from what we're saying mm. is because we're not thinking about <laughs> how to care best for them, but we're thinking about ourselves and so I think in a lot of these things we just have like a self-centeredness that um, ultimately keeps us from honoring the Lord in our speech because yeah. we're not thinking about other people. What are some of the damages that can occur from gossip that you've seen at least? Yeah um, well misinformation is a huge thing and sometimes you can't always like reel that back in um, and assumptions are like they're just killer <laughs> and you know like someone roots in an assumption and they don't and they don't know anything that can become true for them no matter like what you say to them mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like it ruins friendships and um, it can ruin reputations um, it, yeah, it can do a lot of a lot of damage I would say so see that yeah. today in cancel culture if people don't like yes. what you're doing or if they decide that they want to slander or smear or come to a conclusion the results can be catastrophic okay last question on this you are in a lot of ways a bit of a mediator and here's what I mean by that because um, some theologian right now armchair theologian is like Christ is the only mediator I know <laughs> calm down I'm with you what I mean is the teenagers grow up mm -hmm. they go to college you're there yeah then they are deployed out from there so that's what I mean yeah yeah in that phase what can parents do to better prepare, better disciple? What can churches do to mm -hmm. better prepare, better disciple the generation coming in so that their time in this mediatory phase, it's kind of a preparation phase, yeah. it's an education phase, for life in the world is more useful and maybe more mature. I'm not saying that they have to be perfect and to for some sure. level, we don't want to fake it. Yeah. But is there something that can be done leading into those years that a parent listening to this or a teenager listening to this is I can better prepare for the fishbowl of yeah. college. Like you're off and whether you live at home or not, like you're in this new society yeah. and it have its, it's at, it has its own politics yeah, and its, it's own. It's a weird place. It is. A very, <laughs> it's a very weird place. Yeah. And you have RAs and RDs and you have all these things and you have very uncomfortable dorm beds, no yeah. offense. Yes, you have. When I go to the doctorate, <laughs> which I'm done now, I did my time, but I would stay. They put us, for the in, summers, yeah. they put us in the dorms, and they're great. They're very thankful, and they're freshmen. They need to get yeah, yeah. a little bit of hazing <laughs> in that regard. Uh, sanctified hazing. Yes. Don't give them a comfortable course. bed. And so I was in, I stayed in Dixon Hall yep. once, and then Waldoc mm -hmm. Hall. So I'm in these dormitories, and I'm thinking, like, my kids were here, like, the, you're just there. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. There, you're a free bird. It's so true. And you got to be careful how you fly. How do you prepare? How can parents prepare for life in Dixon Hall? <laughs> yeah. Down that long hallway. That long hallway. Everybody's sharing two bathrooms. Yep. And Waldock. <laughs> and life detached. Yeah. Oh man, there's so much to say about that. But I think one thing you get parents on like both sides of the spectrum who I think do so much for their kids or try to protect them so much from everything that mm. they like 
can't even think for themselves and then you have the parents or who like aren't involved at all and their kids are just you know off doing whatever they want and they haven't had any bounds and I think what could be helpful is to try to find a balance and remember like our motto is like we're preparing them to build their own convictions and be able to go out and without having rules mm -hmm. live this way it's something that they believe they understand and that's why they're doing it yeah. and I feel like a lot of times they come in and maybe it's just because of mom and dad or, and it's fine to balance. And I'm not a parent, so I'm not trying to say it's easy. Um, but I think helping them think through some of those things more critically. Um, and I really think, I mean, everyone talks about this. I think social media is having an insane impact mm. on our students. And I really think that there's, we need to think more about that as we are growing up in this age of limits on that or talking at least communicating yeah. and talking through some of the the common things that arise because of social media because it does have an impact you can't just yeah. be on that all day scrolling looking at different things reading gossip mag you know like all mm -hmm. of the things and think it's not going to have an impact on your life um and so i think that we need to think through that a little bit more and be honest about that reality yeah. um because i think it's it's definitely a weight, if not more. That's so helpful. When I hear you describing all that, I think of a thing that I think older, wiser parents have told me. I'm a dad of five and six on the way. And yeah. they say you need to approach parenting as not raising kids, but raising adults, meaning you're preparing them for adulthood. You yes. want to help them prepare to exercise their independence yes. and to do that well. And as somebody who's prayerfully in Christ, but that's so helpful. I'm so thankful yeah. for your labors and I think I would say your long-suffering patience <laughs> because I'm sure you deal with a lot of things even uh, probably today you've had phone calls and yeah. drama and yes. as the Dean of Women though we need you you're doing a great job Thank you. <laughs> you're pouring into a generation that needs it oh, so it's a privilege so good yeah. wisdom thank thanks. you so much yeah thanks